This is the plaintiff, Judy Brooks says. She says the defendant crashed into her lamppost with his lawnmower, damaging it. He said he was a man of his word and that he would fix it, but he hasn't, and shame on him. She's suing for $374.31, the amount she's out. This is the defendant, Eldrin Howard. He says the plaintiff's trying to take advantage of him. He admits knocking over her old rusty lamppost and he said he would replace it. But this woman's trying to up the price on him and change their agreement. So he wants the judge to decide. He's accused of saying one thing and doing another. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that her lawn cutting guy slammed his mower into her light post and broke the thing in half. But the defendant says the rest of the old thing was about to fall down anyway, so why should he buy her a brand new one? It's the case of a lamppost letdown. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Ms. Brooks says what happened. I'm going to have to new judge. Um, Howard does my lawn and he brings his heifers. On July the 16th, they came over to do my lawn. And when this heifer was driving the, he was driving the lawnmower, I went and sat on the couch for, for them to finish like I always do. And when they finish, I come back to the door so I can pay them. All of a sudden, I heard this loud noise, almost like an automobile crash. Up. And I, I rushed up and looked at the door. And my, my uh, electric lamppost was laying on the ground. And a part of it, it was the pole was was knocked from the base at the bottom and from the base, and wires was and a hanging was showing. Okay. And and one the heifer said something about when the um, when the house how old was it? Somebody said oh, but when I purchased this home, I renovated it inside and I cut the bushes in the front and put a new lamp post because so how old was like, the lamp post? I, uh, since 2014. Okay. 2014. All right. What happened, uh, Mr. Howard? Are uh, Were you there when it happened? Yes. Yes, I was. Um, I, I cut Miss Judy. I've been cutting her, Your Honor, for like three years now. This year, she kind of changed the game up. She had, I didn't cut her. The first time I cut her was, was already May 7th. And then she didn't have me come back and cut her again until June 21st, mind you. She's getting like six weeks growth that time. The grass in the front was over a foot high on August 4th. We were doing the best we could and the lawnmower bag caught her post. It knocked the post down and I said, okay, I'm responsible for that post. She said that she would allow me to replace it and we go from there. Okay, Within so when did later. you re did you try to replace it? Because she I didn't get a chance. She well, did what is it right didn't away. get a chance? It's July sixteenth when it happens, and she says it was August fourth when she went ahead and fixed it herself. So that's two weeks. Right, and we had just spoke that week before that, and I said, okay, I come by a couple of days later, and it's fixed. And okay, so you're saying I'm so hold on one second. You say that. It was all arranged, and then in how many days later? Two days later? 20 days later. Oh, well, 20 days is a long time for you to have been, gone ahead and fixed it. Why didn't you fix it? And then, then okay, I, I take that. But then, she, like she just said, that light's 8, 10 years old. The reason that it broke, you can see the pictures. It was totally rusted on the bottom. And Where do I see it rusted see on the bottom? Right here. Where? I'm looking at it. What, what what part of the picture did you want me to look at that shows it rusted? All right, it doesn't. It, this is this was a t uh, eight year old light that's been in the elements for eight years. Okay, and then but she here's, got a so are, okay, you are admitting liability that I broke it, but you yeah. are not admitting damages. You're not admitting part two of a lawsuit, which is how much do you owe me? So you think that yes. she is asking for too much at $374.31, which was $174 for the lamppost and $200 to an electrician to hook it up. So you we're, think that she is asking too much because you could have gotten it done cheaper, but you didn't, cheaper. did you? But you didn't. I, I spoke to her though. I kept in touch with her. And I, I ma'am, I, I contact this lady every week. And then I talked to her. 
I, I, look, I go by her house because I show my buddy. I says, look, we got to get this. It's done already. So I, according like, to you, I don't even Ms. make that in a month. I only cut a few yards. I cut her yards black once every two months. I never even charge her more. The yard to deal was for every two weeks. Yeah, but we're not that here about that. We're here about whether she jumped the gun or didn't jump the gun yes. and whether she has a right to a new lamppost because you broke hers and she wasn't planning on buying a new lamppost. You're, we're here about whether I should be depreciating the value of the lamppost. It's not like she can fix the lamppost or sell it. So this is one of the few instances where someone would get replacement value because they can't use or sell the thing you damage. So okay, now, uh, I'm trying to understand you when you say I was in constant contact, uh, Ms. Brooks says you you uh, dispute that, that he was in constant contact, correct? Tell me, yeah. tell me what happened in those 20 days. I called Mr. Howard. He was supposed to come Monday after the lamp lamppost was broken on this Friday. Mr. Howard did not call me nor come over, and I, but I called him that night, left a message for him to call me. Tuesday morning early, he called me and said, Miss Judy, he always called me Miss Judy. He said, I'll come over Thursday. Thursday come and go, went, Friday morning, I called him. And here's what Mr. Howard told me. He said, listen, Miss Judy, he says, I'll be over Sunday afternoon with the person that damaged uh, my lamppost. He said he had bought me a new one. I said, but it's left. He said, Miss Judy, I'll take care of it. He didn't show up Sunday. And, okay. and when Mr. Howard never took on his own to call me back until he saw the lamp post in my yard uh, August 9th. Which That's was how many time. weeks later? About three weeks later? Once you were tired yes, of chasing was, him. Your, yes, Your Honor. Yeah, I guess, I guess she shouldn't have had to chase him, Mr. Howard. You could have gotten it no. done for cheap. But here's the thing. If from the beginning she had said, no, I don't want you touching it, she would have a right to say that because you don't have a right to fix it on the cheap. You understand? Like she could just say, you know what? No, I want a licensed electrician here. I'm not going to let, you know, uh, Joe Schmo fix it. I want you know, what I want. And she could say that because it's her lamppost that you broke. But here I am, I'm listening to this and it's like, oh, I'll be there Thursday. Oh, I'll be there Sunday. I guess you kind of should have done because she was going to give you a chance to do it on the cheap. I find in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $374.31. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails. She gets her money. She's happy. But let's talk to Mr. Howard. I don't know if he's happy or not. Mr. Howard, <laughs> what's going through your mind uh, right now? I guess the judge paid attention to her. He didn't even notice how she comes on the phone and says, my heifers. You know, you could tell that she's somebody that's disrespectful and didn't give me a fighting chance. She, she, she's making me pay $200 for an elect electrician to where we have electricians in our family. My brother's an electrician. You know, and it's like, why I got to pay that two hundred dollars because I didn't come that Sunday, and she goes a day later and fixes it, and then eh, it is what it is. That's why I told her before. Well, she it's your problem. Yeah, I told her. You kept she saying you were going to show up. You were going to show, but you didn't, and and that cost you. Miss Brooks said, "You are you. You seem delighted. You're happy now, right?" Well, you know what? It's not out of the money. It's the way he treated me. I trusted him. He gave me his word, and I'm older. Your word's supposed to be your bond. I have been very upset about this. And he didn't have the respect to call me. And I would have worked with him. I didn't want to come to court. I hate computers. I don't want to be on a computer. I'd rather be home. I would accept his great arrangement, but he never called me. I had to call him. And that's the truth. Well, congratulations. You Thank stuck you. to your guns. Good enough. Thank you okay, so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Harvey, what you think? So, Doug, look, I mean, the guy didn't show up to fix it, and the plaintiff had every right to go somewhere else, uh, get it repaired, and then charge the guy for what it cost. Now, in a situation like this, where the guy who cuts lawns is not skilled at repairing light posts, there is no obligation to make him at least fix it in the first instance. The customer can go to a reputable repair company to do the job. A neighbor has a tree cut down and dust from that falls on someone's car. 
Is the neighbor who had the tree cut down liable for getting the other person's car washed? This is almost like an abstract kind of little law school question that you might get on an exam or something. Could there be liability for that? Because I can't imagine somebody suing you when the measure of the damages is 20 bucks. Or a 20 car wash. Over a car wash, really. But um, yeah, I suppose yeah, you could sue. Yeah, you could. I mean, uh, the neighbor is going to have the tree cut down. They know in advance that they're going to have the tree cut down. They could have notified you and said, hey, can you move your car? Or, hey, I have a cover or let's put a sheet over your car. Anything like that. And what if you're a total car geek? like me, and, you, and, and the car's just been completely detailed and waxed, and it's a bluebird, sunny day, it's great outside, you got the car out there, maybe you're gonna do a photo shoot that day, who knows, of your, you know how you do that all the time. Yeah, you so. know how people are doing photo shoots of their car. <laughs> Whatever, but you know. I mean, I guess technically, yes, you know, you'd be, uh, I, I don't recommend it, I don't right. recommend, filing, I recommend driving a block fast, and yeah. then, you know, like driving a block fast right. enough for the dust to fall <laughs> off it, and, uh, and then we don't have a problem, but technically right. speaking, it is kind of a classic law school question. Yeah. You owe a duty of care to others that whatever, you know, and we see this a lot in construction sites, obviously would be. Right. Where they have know, a lot of obligations right. to mitigate dust. They might have fencing and, right. and, duct and different things right. like that. Right, that where you, you do have an obligation to try to see to it that other people's stuff right. isn't, quote, harmed. Um, you know, it seems a little excessive over a car wash yeah, and some dust, so. but I guess technically Just holds it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it off. Just too. drive. But, or you drive. Know.